Good morning, everyone. On behalf of APSC and AMET, I'd like to say a few words at the opening remarks for today's APSD webinar. I'm very, very pleased and happy to hold the 10th APSD regional webinar on therapeutic treatment for upper GI diseases and ASD and POEM in collaboration with CAGE in Cambodia today. I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to the course director, Dr. Ki Buddha, President of Cambodian Association of Gastroenterology Endoscopy and all cooperation from CAGE for organizing this course. In today's workshop, we have invited Professor Mitsuhiro Kida. Uh, huh? I don't think so. The, yeah, today it's the Fujishiro. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Uh, Shuaku. And then Assistant Professor Jirata Sawalski from Thailand, right? And uh, thank you very much for joining us, the expert and the teachers of ESD and POEM. I'm sure that this webinar course with CAGE will be the good opportunity to learn about POEM and ESD with the great techniques and will be helpful for the trainees to learn at actual practices. Please ask any questions and comments to the faculties if you have any, since we have enough time for the questions from the uh, audience today. Once again, APSD is happy to continue to collaborate with CAGE on many aspects from now on. Please enjoy the webinar and let's get started. And before that, I'd like to express my sincere great thanks to the Olympus and the Vivian who worked very hard to organize this. Thanks so much. I'm Mitsuhiro Fujishiro from the Department of Gastroenterology uh, the University of Tokyo. Uh, today's my talk is about the indication for EMR and ESD with step-by-step -step ESD for upper GI regions. Okay, I will share my slide. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. This is my COI. Uh, first of all, yeah, I will, uh, I'd like to talk about method of endoscopic resection. Those are EMR and ASD and polypectomy. Actually, first, uh, the simplest uh, treatment would be uh, polypectomy, which is applied for the pedunculated uh, cancer. Uh, when the lesion is fat or depressed, it is very difficult to make a snailing, so it is necessary to lift up the lesion. There are two methods of EML, one is strip biopsy and the other is a cap method. Uh, when the lesion becomes big or the submucosal fibrosis, it is impossible to remove the lesion by EML technique, so it is necessary to use ESD. Uh, is, ESD is a very wonderful technique after marking uh, some mucosal in, in, injection and mucosal incision and making the submucosal dissection and the lesion is completely resected. When we apply the ESD technique, uh, we can remove the uh, big lesions such as uh, more than five centimeters and when the lesion has ulcerative uh, findings, uh, it's okay to remove in analog fashion. Uh, the representative cases of EMR are shown in this slide. Uh, left hand side is strip biopsy, and right hand side is cap method. After marking a land lesion, uh, when we apply the strip biopsy method, it is necessary to use a two channel endoscope. One channel is for the uh, grasping forceps, uh, the other one for the uh, snare and then lesion is uh, lifted by the pulling the uh, horceps and then the uh, snaring made for the lesion like this. Uh, the problem to use uh, through biopsy would be the uncertainty of the unblocked resection of the whole cancerous lesion. 
And when the region is located the greater curvature of the uh, stomach, uh, this technique would be uh, useful. And now when we use a cap EMO, uh, we just use a single channel endoscope, uh, which is our, uh, our routine endoscope. And the cap is uh, fit uh, on the tip of the endoscope and after marking and uh, injection, and the region is uh, suck inside our cap and the region has been captured by the snare like this and then the region is completely dissected. Uh, this is a simple way to remove the region, but still uh, it is uh, uh, uncertain to remove the region and block dissection because uh, we have to remove the region in a blind fashion so this would be the maybe a major problem to use the EMR. And when we apply the ESD, even if the lesion is become like uh, a big lesion like this, a lesion can be resected in amblock fashion. The, you know, the lesion spread widely, uh, radially spreading like this. Although the lesion would be the intramucosal lesion, so uh, we carefully check the margin of the lesion, uh, and then make a marking around the lesion like this. And then, then some mucosal in, uh, injection, and then the uh, mucosal incision. Uh, there, after uh, making the circumferential mucosal incision, uh, we can make a submucosal dissection like this. Actually, the, uh, when we apply the submucosal dissection, uh, we carefully cut the submucosal layer to avoid bleeding. But sometimes we encounter can we can bleeding. Oh. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, I will continue. Okay. Then uh, this is an IT knife. Uh, there is an insulated uh, chip uh, knife. Uh, it is very useful to remove the lesion uh, safely uh, without uh, perforation. And then the some mucosal tissue is captured by the uh, uh, insulation tip and then lesion is completely dissected like this. Uh, even when the lesion is a bigger lesion like this, uh, we can completely remove the lesion. The goal of our endoscopic resection it must be the safe and reliable envelope resection for possible node negative neoplasms. Then what is node negative neoplasms? Uh, it is uh, a little difficult to you know, define the positive node negative uh, neoplasms uh, according to the uh, organs. I mean, the, the esophagus, stomach, or the colorectum. The definition are uh, slightly changed according to the uh, organs. However, there are maybe uh, I will say there roughly say the absolute indication be the less than one percent of lymph node metastasis, uh, considering the ninety five percent confidential interval, and relative indication uh, must be the less than ten percent of lymph node metastasis, uh, according to the ninety five percent confidential interval. Uh, from the analysis of surgical resected specimens. Uh, this right shoulder uh, indication in the stomach, uh, this small differential type uh, non assertive uh, mucosal lesion is a target of the uh, EMR or ESD. When the lesion become bigger or the, the lesion has assertive findings, or lesion uh, is undifferentiated type, uh, these regions are uh, targeted for uh, only ESD, not the EML. And the other uh, early gas cancer uh, considered uh, as relative indication when endoscopic resection is applied. 
in terms of the esophagus, uh, the, when the lesion is uh, T1A, EP, or LPM, there will be the uh, absolute indication of endoscopic resection. The, when the lesion size become more than five centimeter in the full circumferential extension, then this region will become the uh, candidate of surgical resection or chemo radiotherapy. But when the region is less than five centimeter or a non circumferential extent, this region is an absolute indication of endoscopic resection. When the region becomes uh, MM or uh, SM1, uh, when the region spread uh, in the full circumferential area, then uh, this region is a target of the uh, some, uh, surgical resection or chemo radiotherapy. But uh, when the region is not a circumferential lesion, the endoscopic resection is applied as a diagnostic measures. Uh, before starting uh, ESD, if you start ESD, uh, you have to have their some minimal uh, competence. Uh, I mean that the precise preoperative prediction of tumor depth and the tumor lateral extension and target biopsy at any intended area and the reliable technique of uh, polypectomy, EMR, and endoscopic hemostasis. Uh, this is the uh, wildlife image of the protruded region here. You may diagnose this to be the uh, two-way type uh, gastric cancer. Uh, and then the doctor performed the ESD for the two-way protruded region. However, final diagnosis of the resected specimen revealed horizontal margin positive. And then carefully observed again the uh, previous image, then you can see the widespread lesion, uh, which means that the lesion has a uh, depressed reddish region in the proximal part of the uh, protruded lesion. Then uh, the, when we apply the ESD, uh, it is necessary, it was necessary to remove the, these areas, but the only dissection was performed on here. This kind of misdiagnosis should be avoided. And then uh, in Japan, we take uh, more than uh, 40 photos uh, to carefully observe in the stomach. And then this will be the our uh, routine endoscopic sequence uh, when we perform the en endoscopic examination. So the, uh, this is uh, maybe uh, very important uh, to find out the region and make a diagnosis of the region. Uh, and then uh, target biopsy is also uh, very important. When you uh, take a biopsy, uh, this distance, uh, from the tissue to the uh, uh, the tip of endoscope is a, a very very nice uh, distance. I mean that when we perform the endoscopic resection, uh, this uh, distance, please keep this distance. So that when you make a biopsy, uh, please uh, do the biopsy like this. And then uh, when we perform the endoscopic uh, resection, uh, we sometimes encounter bleeding. So uh, we know how to manage bleeding. Uh, so emergency endoscopy for bleeding is uh, mandatory to uh, start uh, ESD. And of course, the easier technique should be mastered, uh, such as uh, uh, polypectomy or uh, EMR in the colon, then uh, if you know how to remove the lesion by polypectomy or the EMR, these are the fundamental technique uh, which is necessary to perform the ESD. Okay, 
And then after the sufficient experience on the fundamental therapeutic cases and detailed inspection of GI tumors, endoscopies can become the trainees of ESD. Uh, this uh, training system uh, is uh, applied in our university. Uh, first step is observers, second step is residents, the third step is beginners, and the fourth step is junior, and then the fifth step will be a senior uh, class. And then uh, first, uh, of course, it is necessary to uh, use animal training uh, using their uh, resected uh, posing uh, stomach and then uh, uh, running of available method and innovation of new method. And the uh, ESD should be done under supervision of experts from gastric antrum and body and cardia or rectum and esophagus and colon. And uh, after uh, master uh, some uh, ESD technique then uh, uh, perform the ESD with uh, your own uh, responsibility from the gastric antrum. Uh, okay, and then maybe uh, there are senior doctor teach a younger doctor, and then uh, we can perform the uh, ESD very effectively. Uh, th this is the first case of the uh, beginner a trainee uh, in our hospital. Uh, actually, the mucosal incision. Uh, as I mentioned previously, the, it is necessary to uh, go uh, more close to the uh, tissue, but the uh, beginner cannot make such a uh, maneuver. And uh, you know, the distance between the tip of the endoscope and the uh, knife tip is uh, uh, very far. So it's a problem to perform the nice uh, ESD. But uh, after uh, 30 uh, case of e a trainee, and then uh, the ESD become very uh, smoother, and then uh, their very nice ESD can be done. Uh, actually, the, even if the bleeding occur like this, the uh, trainee can manage this kind of bleeding by using the tip of the endoscope and a uh, very calm and steady uh, ESD can be done. So uh, there are this uh, number, 30 cases was confirmed uh, from the data of the uh, National Cancer Center Hospital, Tokyo. Uh, actually the plan, the uh, trainees experienced more than uh, 30 cases. Uh, there are uh, perforation rate decrease uh, and then you know the unblocked resection rate increase and operation time become shorter and then uh, as I mentioned uh, previously the step by step approach uh, be the uh, better way to master ESD first lesion uh, should be anterior wall side of the gastric antrum uh, second step B, greater curvature of the antrum, then posterior wall and lesser curve of the antrum, and then move on to the uh, gastric body. The easiest part to be the lesser curvature uh, in the gastric body, and posterior wall next, and then anterior wall uh, Next, and finally, the most difficult part to be the greater curvature of the gastric body. And uh, how to apply the knife will be also very uh, important. Uh, we have to consider the strategy uh, to remove the lesion. Actually, when the lesion is located close to the pyloric ring, the when you make your uh, cutting, mucosal cutting uh, here, the lesion moved to the pyloric ring. So the, it is uh, important to cut uh, this uh, area close to the pyloric ring first, and then uh, the lesion moved to the uh, proximal part a little, and then uh, there uh, we can avoid a difficult situation to uh, perform the ESD. And then, uh, I may skip this uh, 
uh, strategy, but anyway, uh, uh, there, uh, it is important to consider uh, how to perform the ESD uh, in their uh, stomach according to the situation. And then when the, you perform the ESD in the esophagus, of course, it is also very important to know how to make a mucosal incision and submucosal dissection. When the region is located the left wall side of the uh, esophagus, and then the patient uh, is uh, uh, on their uh, left lateral position. So their water or breathing uh, blood uh, come to the left wall side. So uh, we have to cut the uh, left wall side first and the region move to the uh, posterior wall side. And uh, to, uh, it is important to avoid the uh, water or breathing blood. And then uh, ESD performed very uh, effectively. When the region is located to right wall side, then uh, first cut to the here, left wall side, and the region move to the right wall side so uh, we can avoid uh, water or breathing blood. And if the region look here, uh, similar to avoid the uh, move to the uh, uh, left wall side. And then in case of the duodenum, uh, ESD is very challenging. So uh, if you become the very expert, uh, please perform the ESD in the uh, duodenum. But uh, in case of the duodenum, the, we have the other, another technique such as the cause near prepectomy or the EMR. So when the region is pre-malignant region, uh, please apply this easier technique such as cause near prepectomy or the EMR. And then uh, ESG from the ESG guideline, uh, you know, the uh, ESG recommends EMR as a first line endoscopic resection technique for non malignant, large, uh, non ampullary uh, during adenomas. Uh, this one is a strong recommendation. And then when uh, uh, you apply the ESD, then uh, this must be there only in the Expert hands. So uh, ESG recommended the ESD for duodenal adenoma is e effective resection technique only in expert hands. So uh, and then ESG recommends that duodenal ESD should be reserved for selected indication as expert ESD centers. So there, when uh, there you try to do ESD and um, uh, you must become their uh, six step expert class. Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention. I finish my talk. Thank you so much, Professor. And now it's time for question and answer. Do you have any questions? Yes, uh, I have one question. First of all, I would like to thank very much to Professor Mishud Hiro uh, Fushishiro for excellent presentation. Um, I want to ask one basic question concerning uh, how can we evaluate the depth of the tumor? Evaluate the depth of the tumor, you mean? Yes. Uh, and um, uh, in Japan, we don't use the EUS to uh, estimate the depth of invasion, but uh, the wildlife uh, observation, uh, considering the shape or uh, color or the uh, change of shape after the inflation or deflation, then uh, we can uh, know uh, the depth of invasion. Uh, actually, the friend region is uh, has a possibility of intermucosal cancer. We apply the ESD uh, as a diagnostic measure and finally confirm the depth of invasion by the uh, histological uh, material specimens. So uh, we roughly uh, uh, estimate the depth of invasion 
And then maybe the most important point to be the uh, resectability of the uh, lesion by ESD technique or your own hands. Okay. Yes, because uh, for for our Cambodian uh, doctor for evaluate the deep other to uh, deep other tumor is very difficult. And uh, now we start to have uh, EUS. It, it is very new here, so uh, it's, uh, EUS can help us for evaluation the depth of tumor. <laughs> um, maybe there are some additional information is obtained by the EUS, but uh, there are, in Japan we don't use EUS so much. Actually, it's time consuming and. But, 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 uh, of course, the, we have the additional information that we can make more uh, uh, possibility to make a, a precise, more precise diagnosis. So, uh, uh, please uh, use the US. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, the, the, uh, we use the uh, US, but uh, we uh, give up using the US in routine. Okay. Routinely. <laughs> So it means that uh, evaluation by white light or BNI or other uh, do uh, can help us to evaluate the deep of the tumor. EUS can be used case by case, right? Mm, right, right, right. Thank you. Uh, uh, white light uh, observation would be uh, useful to know the depth of invasion. And then magnification uh, with NBI or BLI would not helpful to predict the depth of invasion, but to uh, uh, predict the uh, histology, I mean, the differential type or undifferentiated type, and then this kind of the uh, equipment based IE uh, is very helpful. Okay. Uh, Fujisho Sensei, continue from the point, I have a further question. As we mentioned in your talk, uh, Detect detection of the lesion and characterized the lesion is very crucial for successful ESD. So what, what is your tip for us uh, in the country where we don't have uh, as much as frequent of gastric lesion in, like in Japan and we don't have a senior expert. So how, how, you, how, uh, how can we improve ourselves to detect lesion in, in stomach and to characterize? Mm, okay, maybe uh, the first of all, it may be concentrate the uh, uh, individual who ha who may have the um, uh, possibility of uh, gastric cancer. I mean that the high risk patient, please target the high risk patient. Uh, these are the atrophy, uh, a wide atrophy, and the intestinal metaplasia, and then. Maybe uh, uh, please uh, um, come to Japan to <laughs> see the lots of region, and uh, or the uh, please uh, check uh, watch our video clips, uh, which may be shown you uh, by the web or something, and then um, uh, to see the region itself. Actually, the, when you see the lesion, then you can imagine the lesion. But if you don't see the lesion, uh, then uh, you, cannot, you cannot see the lesion, even if the lesion is located there. Hmm. Cannot wait for Japan to open and fly to Japan to see the lesion. Thank mm. you. Okay, so there is some question from the audience. Uh, the first question um, is for the beginner, which side of the stomach and side of the tumor should be stuck? And I will combine two questions together for you. And another question will be, uh, what is the tip to improving the hand skill and tip control for the trainee to learn ESD? Okay, so when you start ESD, please start the lesion uh, less than two centimeter, uh, preferably maybe the around one centimeter lesion, and then lesion maybe the two-way type lesion be easier, 
And the location of the region may be the anterior water side of the gastric antrum. Mm. When you find out there's such two way, one centimeter, and then anterior wall side of the gastric antrum, uh, these regions are a uh, good target for beginners. And then uh, how to improve your technique? Maybe uh, please practice a lot. I mean, that are, uh, when you perform the colonoscopy and polypectomy or the management of bleeding uh, uh, during emergency endoscopy. And then maybe uh, please use the hands-on uh, by a, a hands on seminar or something to learn how to perform the ESD from the experts. And then um, uh, watch video to perform the ESD uh, uh, by the uh, experienced hands or experts. Then uh, if you want to become the expert of ESD and then uh, please do the, <laughs> these things. Okay, thank you so much for your answers. And the last question is that, uh, what is the strategy for ESD technique in peripyloric ring lesion? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I, as I mentioned in my talk, and um, the when the lesion is located preparatory area, uh, uh, it the ESD become very um, more difficult when the lesion move to the, the pyloric ring. So mucosa incision should be made uh, close to uh, the area close to the uh, pyloric ring first. Then when you make a mucosa cutting to the uh, close to the pyloric ring, the lesion move to the uh, proximal part. Uh, apart from the uh, uh, pyloric ring first, and then uh, you can uh, easily perform the ESD. So uh, please start ESD from the difficult area. Okay, and uh, probably the last question for you. Uh, I have two questions, two more questions from the audience. Uh, he would like to ask that uh, you mentioned in the presentation you have to take 40 photos for the gastroscopy and what are the location that you uh, usually take and what type of patient that you take such many photos. The second mm. one about the lesion after you perform the ESC, could you tell the time to check and control the lesion if it's cut properly or not. Mm. Okay, and um, uh, routine for, uh, number to take a routine uh, endoscopy uh, is 40 uh, in a majority of hospital in Japan. So the every patient who had the endoscopy, routine endoscopy uh, can uh, be taken uh, uh, 40 photos, everyone, <laughs> for everyone. And then, uh, and then the location uh, uh, in the gastric cantrum, uh, a photo and around the angle for photo and then uh, gastric body, a photo, the cardia or the, uh, the right of exposition or something, then uh, we can take the, uh, around 40 photos. If you want to know in detail, uh, please visit the, uh, some uh, a paper published by the, uh, maybe, uh, which one is better, but uh, maybe uh, Professor Yao maker a uh, wonderful paper. So uh, please, uh, visitor, uh, the Professor Yao's paper, or the WEO also make a uh, uh, photo documentation paper. Uh, uh, the number is not uh, 40, but uh, uh, less than 40, but uh, this one would be very helpful to know how, uh, uh, where we should take a photo during routine endoscopy. WEO make a publication in digestive endoscopy. And um, 
after ESD, the when we make a, a curative resection, then uh, annual follow-up uh, to detect uh, metachronous uh, cancer is made. Uh, every year we take uh, we uh, uh, make a endoscopic observation for the patient after endoscopic resection. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your answers.